Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Full-Time Investor. I am Mandy Brenham. I guess you can kind of only see it half of my sign here. Um, known as a joint venture queen, specializing in asset acquisitions, joint ventures, uh, sharing, teaching, masterminding, mentoring, uh, just soaking up any kind of real estate information that I might be able to get my hands on. So thanks for being here today because it's certainly going to be a worthwhile show. Um, I have, as a guest with me today, uh, super honored to be able to have Jennifer Hunt, who is the Vice President Research uh, Rain Canada. Jennifer, thanks for being here with me today. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you so much, Mandy. Uh, I'm bright-eyed and bushy-tailed at 11 a.m. Jen's over in Vancouver, so it's only 8 a.m. for her time. Uh, it's still a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jennifer's been investing since 2009. Uh, she's been in, included vacation rentals, residential, multi industrial. Um, she even did some creative um, rental units for the Vancouver Olympics. Um, and uh, and one of Canada's first REIAs from Rain Canada. So if you're from the Rain world, uh, Rain is the real estate investing network. I actually met a gentleman last night whose name was Rain, and I said, "Do you are you a member of Rain?" And he said, "No. What is Rain?" So I got to explain it. Um, okay. So it's a network of people that I'm in um, involved in. And what attracted me to Jennifer, uh, so that all of our listeners know, is Jennifer is a genius when it comes to market research. Well, and, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you research and read more things than I probably even know where to find those pieces of data to be able to collect. Uh, and I know that churns in your brain and you just spit it out very well. So uh, we're going to take all of this information that you have that's out there collectively for everybody today. And we're going to funnel it through so that people understand what kind of market research they need to do and uh, and where best to find it. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Well, my pleasure. And and you mentioned in terms of market research and being a bit of a geek. Um, I absolutely love research. Though to not be, um, you know, into so much research that you're into paralysis. So this isn't about analysis paralysis. This is about being in action, but being strategic and yeah. also mitigating risk. Yeah. I love to layer on as many foundational pieces so that when you're investing in real estate, whether it's a long term play or a short term play for your portfolio, you are in the right place at the right time and the mar right market for you. Yeah. So then let's go high level here and bring this bring this down. So somebody says, oh, my gosh, I'm going to invest in real estate. And one of their first questions is, but where do I buy and insert your expertise? So how do you help guide people or where are some things that people can start off by researching to be able to know where they should invest yeah, there's a whole number of layers to that question, even right there. So I'm going to actually just step back one more step. And before even beginning where, I would I would encourage people to understand what they want their real estate to do. Um, if they're looking for financial freedom by design, or if they're looking to replace retirement or create retirement income, or if they're looking to replace their income as soon as possible now, all of those factors drive um, what an individual is looking for, what, uh, and then and then we can identify where we can identify the property type and all of those. So just to sort of step back and yep. make sure that you've got a plan. And of course, RAIN, we support all of our uh, members and community in terms of being able to support and get them onto the path that's right for them. Yep. And then that being said, in terms of market research, yeah. we have what's called um, Rain's long-term real estate success formula. And we're going to start there because if nothing else, for those of you who are listening, please get your hands on that. Come out to a Rain event. We'll get you the Rain's long-term real estate success formula. And that really drives everything. And if you can get that, you're in good shape. So what that is, is it's a formula that starts with economic health, uh, GDP, gross domestic product. So basically, are there companies coming into a location? Are there um, expansions in terms of the economy? 
is a growing. And that correlates and actually pushes and creates employment opportunities. Yeah. And with employment opportunities, i.e. jobs. <laughs> so people come and then the people move to get a job. And so that's when we see populations start to increase. And those three, like three key drivers are really foundational. And as long as you have economic health, jobs and population, yeah. then people need a place to rent. And then that drives the, the housing, the rental market. And then the rental market drives the housing market. And ultimately, that's about an 18 month to two year window. So you you almost, well, not you almost, you get to forecast and predict where a particular location is going. And that's the first foundational piece. So if you can get those sort of eight key drivers in this long-term real estate success formula, you'll you'll be really well positioned. And then, of course, Mandy, as you know, I wouldn't stop there. No. <laughs> <That's what's laughs> really so um, we have what's called Rain's Property Goldmine Scorecard, mm -hmm. and um, that's about forty indicators that an individual uh, and key drivers that an individual will want to look at. So we look at. Um, economic health, as I mentioned, but then you, you dive into the actual politics and we call those market influencers. So market influencers are things like interest rates or policies that a government has uh, implemented. And all of those actually affect the, the key drivers. And so we're always looking at the political view. And as you know, Mandy, um, we curate <laughs> This is the what's behind yeah. the curtain. <laughs> and we curate basically a newspaper for real estate investors. And at our regular monthly meetings, we share what the heck these news articles and studies actually mean to real estate investors. Because a policy over on one side of the country versus a policy over on another side of the country actually makes a difference to your real estate portfolio. So we are always looking ahead yeah. to see how those well, yeah. And you guys are you are taking uh, documents that I would never read in Vancouver or think that something from, you know, Quebec has an influence on my market. But you actually bring it all together to be able to see how it all does fit together to be able to uh, to to figure out if it how it affects me uh, with my investment portfolio. But so um, and within that within that not necessarily that book there, but your top 10 cities in uh, in Ontario to invest. Right. There's the top 10 cities. Mm -hmm. You also have in there what uh, what strategies are best for what market. So let's just say that somebody is looking to replace their income now. How do mm -hmm. they know? Uh, so we'll just say that they're going to get into flipping. Right. How do they yeah. know if it's a good market for flipping? Yeah, I, I love that question because it's underneath that question. There's so there's so much to really go on. Um, so we look at when we're doing our top, there's two layers to that. And when we do our top 10 towns, we're really applying Rain's Property Goldmine Scorecard. 40 kind of indicators. We assess them across... Uh, a ton of towns in, you know in Ontario. Yeah. I'm not, I think I saw the gold mine score kind. I remember the first time I saw it was in Don Campbell's book, Real Estate Investing in Canada. Yes. So if yes. somebody is looking to see this gold mine scorecard, I'm sure we could um, we can forward them to uh, Rain Canada online. But I know it's in Don Campbell's book as well. Yeah, and certainly reach out to us, info at Rain Canada. So it's R E I N Canada dot com and info at Rain Canada dot com. And for sure, happy to, to share that with you. It's very, very useful. So I've got a great research team. So we not only take that Rain's uh, goldmine scorecard, but we, we actually look at even more indicators yeah. and market influencers. And we're really, we're looking at over about 70 to 80 when we're doing and curating, uh, the top 10 towns report. And that tells us where um, where to invest. Those and in, ranks the top ten, yeah. and we know those markets. That's awesome. But to your point, just because a market is a top ten town, that really shows that it's got the economic legs. It's got the employment, but it might not actually be the in terms of the real estate cycle. So we're looking at. Um, uh, cities that have sort of five, 10 year long term projections. But that doesn't mean to say that it's, you know, hot off the press right now, yep. um, depending on what you're looking to accomplish. So this example is now 
I've just got Alberta as an example, but yeah. we look at now the real estate cycle and show you where that particular city is in the real estate cycle. And then what we call our tactics table, how to invest. So I'll give you a quick look at what that would look like. This is um, Okotoks in Alberta, for example. And we, oh, here, there yeah. we go. There, Larry. So here we are in recovery. We've got the boom and the slump. And then this is our investment. Right, let me, there. Yeah. Tactics well, table. Okotok is in recovery, which would put that buy and hold is good uh in the middle at the end rent to own is is good uh yeah. optimal tricky and yeah. uh yeah what was the last one uh so the rent to own is good optimal and tricky in the in the in the recovery phase there are so many um little pieces of information and nuggets in each one of those so when you look at a real estate cycle it's like okay boom slump recovery but there's actually that's divided into three tranches and we look even into those and there are subtle nuances and you might think, OK, well, why is rent to own tricky in recovery? But it was optimal in the middle of recovery because okay. of the um, psychology that occurs in a market at that particular phase. And it actually has to do with the tenant buyer thinking differently at that point. So there's there's lots, but you don't have to get into a whole ton no. of detail. You just need to know that there's times that you need to avoid buying yes. and there's better times to buy. So obviously you want to buy when the market is lower and you want to sell if you're going to be selling or if you hold on to it. But yes. then if you're holding on to it, that's no problem. You just need to make sure that you've bolstered um, your finances and your capital so that you can ride out that longer term cycle. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's a, a property that I drive by all the time here in town. So keep in mind that I am a long term buy and hold. Um, you know, I do the burrs. So I do a lot of flips to myself, but I'm really not looking for an end buyer for any of my projects. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a house that I drive by and it got bought last March or April. It uh, was listed last November for sale and it's still for sale. Full flip inside and out painted wow. all this yeah. kind of stuff so obviously the investors missed the fact that our market was not good for a flip or the and they've not seen that there are other options that they could do to do it so um one of uh, the questions here is how to know that a market is good for a fix and flip there's a lot of flippers out there <laughs> Flip, <laughs> not poppers, flippers um and trying to figure out what if it's off the top 10 city list how do I know if Sudbury, how do I know if Windsor, what can I do on my own to be able to figure out what's a good city for me to be able to, to do a flip in? Well, first off, I would say become a RAIN member right away. <laughs> Join the RAIN community 100%. Um, my experience is, uh, and as you and I were talking beforehand, Mandy, I started real estate um, outside of the RAIN community. And what I got, what really attracted me to RAIN um, is, the, is the process and all of the foundational pieces that mm -hmm. most other organizations, most other real estate investors don't do or they don't talk about or they don't teach right. and that's not to say that what they teach isn't great because there's some wonderful components out there and great spreadsheets and all of that so that's good but ultimately i've seen a lot of people get into a lot of trouble because yep. they didn't apply economic fundamentals and that's ultimately where reigns we've got a 15 step process and to answer the question here on facebook live of where do how do i know well we've got 15 steps with about 78 hours worth of content yeah. in order to determine the right place at the right time and the right property for you yeah. and and to do it responsibly so that you're setting yourself up for success and I truly am I'm so passionate about these these key steps and most organizations that I've seen they don't start until our step number eight so if you think about building a home and the foundation that you need in order to have a really good solid home that's going to last for a long time and you start without the foundation what does that do to your home in terms of putting yeah. it at risk, right? Yep. And, and I really, I like people to be, um, and, and for myself, I'm an investor, as you know, I've got over 50 doors. And when I went to go and start, I didn't know about those foundational pieces. And, you know, if I, if I knew what I know now, I probably would have bought some different properties. Yep. Absolutely. And in some different markets. And or more of the ones that you were doing right in the first place. 
you yeah, exactly. Why they were, why, you know, yeah, I would have yeah. bought more. And I, I would have bought more and I would have bought um, them in some different locations. And because of that market research, truly, um, that foundation is so critical. And that's what I love. And I'm so passionate about these sort of key eight steps of the market research and the economic fundamentals and getting your financial house in order so that you yep. can build your portfolio. Yep. And that's where I would say uh, to answer those questions of, you know, what, fix and flip. Can I do it here? Yeah. And can I do it? And you mentioned <laughs> winning. And, and those are those are great questions. But if we step back and we build it all the way through, then we are we, we can really do this responsibly and set you up for success. And that's what I'm really passionate about. Yeah, yeah. Christy McDonald, who I saw last night, uh, just indicated that rain back office is full of information for investors. So in a world. Oh, and Christy, hi. I uh, I met you last week. It was awesome at the rain member meeting. And congratulations on your award. Uh, Christy is rocking it out there in the real estate investment world. And uh, she's also a boater. And so am I. So we're going to connect. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe I need to see Christy. We're back to this conversation. I just said somebody said we need to join a yacht club to be able to meet some different people so i was like oh maybe we need a boat no maybe not um um but we were kind of talking about um mcdonald or sorry uh google md okay and you know anybody can be a doctor these days they just plunk it into google and they say hey google how can i what's wrong with me how do i make myself feel better and um we're getting to that point in real estate to be able to say like what's a good place that we can um <laughs> what's a good place to where we can invest and they think that online is just they can find they find so much information so you know being able to package it into a rain back office i know when you share a report on millennials that the research has been done who people who i have qualified already as market experts and analysts and research and i don't need to question the validity of these kind of reports um how do you how do we get people to uh not just look on google for the information that they feel is best well, and thank you, Mandy. And, and hopefully, well, maybe I'll have to come back and walk through exactly how to do it. And we can do a, a session on on training on that for sure. And and you're 100% right in, in making sure that, you know, you take the time. One of my one of my key quotes that I've just I live my life by is go slow to go fast. And the intention behind that is to just build again that build that foundation, figure out your processes, figure out what you really need. Yeah. Because um, we were doing uh, this this month actually at our rain uh, member meetings, and it was it, it's something I'm really passionate about of building your your pension plan, if you will, yeah. like building your retirement income through real estate. And I've got a, a neat way of looking at that that's different than most. Most people will be thinking, "Oh, cash flow! I got to get cash flow. Got to run out and get a." Well, I thought I had to get a hundred doors, so that was stressful. I mean, I got fifty in three years, which was great, but yeah. still stressful. And and as a result, if you actually just take a exactly. look at what you actually need, you know that I did some math, and for a ten thousand uh, dollar income for a pension plan, let's call it ten thousand yeah. dollars a month, so one hundred and twenty a year, yeah. you need seven investment properties paid at about that sort of paid off. Paid off. Paid off. Yeah. yeah. And that's, uh, that really can alleviate a lot of pressure. So, uh, you know, I know folks when they just get started, because I was just like that too, running out, trying to get properties. If you slow down, go yeah. slow to go fast, you can really um, activate your plan and do it really responsibly because seven properties is very different than a hundred. And you may find out, and you know, it was great because at the, at the member meeting, our, our community members were like, wow, you know what? I actually only need five or I've already got my pension plan. Like I've figured it out. And the, and the stress and the relief, and then you get to play. Then right. you get to create, okay, well, now how can I do it faster? And how can I accelerate this program and pay off my mortgages, you know, yeah. earlier than the amortization period and all of a sudden there's a huge sense of relief creativity now real estate is fun it's not a panic and i really want that for people that uh when they're investing that they go slow to go fast and they build what they actually need uh because the journey can be a lot of fun when the stress is when it's not stressful so yeah. 
Um, There's a, yeah. it's a get rich slowly kind of game. If we call it a game, because gosh, I have fun doing this. This is fun for me. Um, but if you are looking at it, you know, if you need seven properties paid off, you, you, you have to start today. You've got to start to be able to, you know, take action on that, not just wait. Um, mm -hmm. And so 25 year amortization that yet yeah, we can, you know, pay that down a little bit. We want to just make sure that we're not, um, that we're not missing the boat here, but it also takes a little bit. I, uh, what I like when I hear the word pension plan and, you know, it's going to be a 25 year out thing is these little ups and downs in the market aren't so much of an issue when we think, well, you know, so what if the market drops and you know, how many people mm -hmm. say that to you? You know, well, what if the market drops? Well, what, what about it? I'm not selling my properties. I'm not like, there's nothing going on with them. So this market drop doesn't actually affect my portfolio the same way that, you know, somebody else in a different strategy or that's trying to do it fast would be, would be looking. So the, the feeling of the long term actually is a reassuring calm down kind of thought. That's right. And, you know, it's as long as, and this goes back to that fundamental market research, is as long as you know that you're in an area that's going to be bolstered by folks who need to live there. Yeah. And that means employment, that means um, jobs, and that means that populations are going to live there. And as a result, you will have renters. So then in turn, and this, we're just talking kind of long term buy and hold the moment. And certainly, yeah. you know, there's all the other tactics that we that we look at and we teach and whatnot. And also that this applies to multifamily as well, which is what my portfolio is largely multifamily and commercial. So they do follow similar cycles. So I just wanted to make yeah. sure that that's out there because they know a lot of folks get caught up on I don't want to do just single family or duplexes. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, but regardless, you're, you're wanting to have your multifamily. You want to buy it at the right time, whatever, uh, in terms of that market, but then being in location. So really <laughs> right down into the neighborhood specifics. So, you know, like for example, um, I have an offer on, uh, five multifamily apartments, um, in Calgary right now. So, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Round of applause. That you like you just went up a level. For, I, I just love it. I love it. I love how active you are and that you're 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 taking in your own information to take action this exact same way that we're sharing with other people to do. Yeah, well and Calgary. Well, I mean, this is in Calgary. This is uh we're actually releasing the next one. This is the last, the latest version from the winter, pardon me, right. winter twenty nineteen. Yeah. We're gonna be releasing one in September twenty nineteen in three weeks. So you'll be able to see if Calgary has moved. And you'll see that it's currently um, you know, it's moved from the slump to the end of the slump to recovery. And the investment tactics is in recovery is that, you know, in terms of buy and hold, it's an pretty good time to get in. Now we know that the economic, and I know we're in Ontario here, but That's just okay. to show you sort of how it's applied. And so I know that now it's a good time to get into the Calgary market. Yep. Uh, it's, it's still got a lot of runway in terms of recovery. Politically, there's going to be some um, interesting news given that we've got a new premier in place in Alberta. The federal election is coming up on October yep. 21st and Alberta is oil driven. So the recovery is in place in terms of its economic foundations, but, and it's going to, it will take a while, but I'm prepared for that. And I know that. And the rental market in Calgary remains very, very strong and will continue to do that. Then layer on our brand new university effect report that's okay. being launched on September 28th. And now I know that the University of Calgary is worth looking at in terms of having a student housing shortage. Okay. And then I layer on my millennial report, our Reigns Millennial yeah. Effect report. And now how do I create the right property or, you know, re, re, um, uh, renovate, I guess, repurpose these, yeah. repurpose these multifamily units that are close to the university, that are close to transportation, make them attractive to millennials because we know how, and we've shared that. Yeah. So you can get you can get your hands on these reports um, on raincanada.com. There's opt-ins. So these reports are out there, ladies and gentlemen. Please feel free to use them because <laughs> I do. Yeah, and they work. And so you layer on all those pieces, and this this portfolio that I'm looking at, and these uh, multifamilies are going to be really, really well served uh, for the for the long haul. But I'm repositioning them for student rentals. 
And, uh, and it's pretty exciting because I'm actually putting into practice what I preach. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, and so millennials, are you, uh, that's just your choice of, of tenant profile. There's still obviously lots of others. If you, if you aren't into student rentals or you're not into the high end finishes, there's obviously still a, a very big market for the other side of, of the, the rentals. Well, yeah, you bet. And actually, so, uh, wow. Oh, I can go on this, man. Be careful because you know I can just talk for hours Do on it. And then. Do it. <laughs> Millennials are 27% of the population in Canada, and they just become the largest demographic in Canada. They haven't surpassed that in the U.S. yet, but in Canada, millennials are the number one. Okay. But boomers are just behind at like 26.5% of the population. So baby boomers who are entering into their senior years are really um, important demographic to consider as well. And what are their needs going to be? And they're quite different. And as a result, of course, we will be, uh, Rain will be producing a senior housing report uh, probably in Q1 2020, so coming up this winter, yeah. because we want to be addressing um, both, because your tenant profile might be different. And like yeah. you said, um, Mandy, your tenant profile is based on uh, families. And certainly I've got some properties that, that are family driven. So, yeah. uh, you know, you just depends yeah. on your neighborhood. Everybody needs a place to live. Yeah. 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 So it's, uh, and I think every city is different too. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, you're kind of looking at, yeah, it's okay. So this is one of the cities that's on the top 10 list. But what I create in Aurelia is not the same as what I would create in Toronto or in Hamilton. Um, and right. so, you know, but so your renovations are a little bit different. Your, you know, all your finishes, your rental rates, your options, things like that. Um, definitely. Um, so, so here we are, we're doing lots of different uh, aspects of market research. Um, should somebody even be going? Um, so I like, we just talked, you're in Vancouver and you're looking in Calgary. We're in Ontario. Um, what about finding a location where it fits, where it feels right, you know, close to you? Like, what's your idea of proximity to the investor? <laughs> well, you're, you're asking some interesting questions <laughs> because my portfolio, my, the, the largest portion of my portfolio is actually in Southern Ontario. Okay. But uh, my locations have been uh, so in Chatham, which made an honorary mention in terms yes. of our top 10. Yeah. Um, I, I've had properties in downtown Toronto, Barrie, Ontario. Um, of course, <laughs> it was a, it's a great location, um, right. as well as, as Chatham, as I mentioned, all the way out through um, throughout British Columbia, um, in the Fraser Valley, and also even in Hawaii. Um, so as long as you, which I love, those are my favorite, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, but really, as long as you have your economic fundamentals and your property analysis com combined, you, you can really, and your power team and having folks that you trust who are, you know, nearby on the ground, um, your location really is just about getting into a place that suits you. It suits the right time in the market. Um, and it suits your long-term game plan. So I think that's probably the best way to describe yep. like how to choose it. If you're just getting started, yeah, you might want to start just something that's really close. I really recommend that people, that they take the time to learn how to property manage. You don't have to be the property manager. Yep. yep. But know what, like learn it <laughs> so that you can manage your property manager. Yeah. Ultimately, yep. you need to know and ask the right questions, particularly if you are investing further away. Yep. One more really important question that comes up. There's a lot of people that get emotionally involved in their choice of house. Um, or mm. as first investors, they're like, I'm going to move into this myself, or I'm going to buy, uh, Amanda, I'd like your advice on a Costa Rica timeshare. And, you know, you hear that they would like to go there for a month. And so they're adding that, um, they're adding that personal aspect to their property choice. How do you guide people through trying to remove the emotion or knowing when it's for your personal use compared to really filtering it strictly as an investor? Yeah, there's there. Yeah, there's a lot in that question for sure, Mandy. And what I what I like, yeah, what I like about that is that you. Well, I always go to, and as you know, it's, 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 
starting with the economic fundamentals. Making sure that it's in the top 10 towns report, making sure it's in the right the cycle. cycle. At least ballpark. You, I mean, market influencers policies will change any moment, and that can change how a market feels. And so it might feel like it's in a slump, for example. Um, so, for example, out on the on the West Coast, um, there's a number of markets in the Fraser Valley that folks sort of think, oh, well, it's it's slumping too. But the economic drivers are so strong that for the longer haul, it's, it's experienced what I call reverberation. And so there's this noise in the market that makes it feel like, eh, you know, maybe it's hit a slump. But the drivers are still showing that it's in recovery. And the reason that it's doing all this noise is because of the stress test. It's because of policies. It's because of taxes that have been implemented um, and more on that. But because of those things that you don't necessarily know, I, I really recommend that people take the emotion out of it back to your question. Yeah. And they look at the economic fundamentals. They're aware of the market influencers and the politics and the zoning and who's it, you know, implementing what, and they get to know it. And once you have knowledge and once you feel a sense of mastery over your neighborhood, then the house or the property itself it it becomes it becomes a, it, a business transaction. Business fully. transaction, love that. Yeah, and it and taking that emotion right out. Now that said, I mean, one of the reasons that I got into uh, the Hawaii market initially was because exactly to your point, I wanted to go there. I wanted to spend some time there. Um, I wanted that to be a bit of. I want to retire and spend some time there. I mean, in a little while, but <laughs> at any rate, and 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 have some fun there along the way. But I I didn't in terms of expanding the portfolio that I have there. Absolutely applied Rain's Property Gold Mine Scorecard. It applies. It works in any country that's really got a, a basic fundamental democracy that you know with a decently stable government. Right. So if you think about the UK or you think about, well, maybe that's a bad example right now, but if, <laughs> but if you think about Australia or if you think about the US or whatever have you, it really can be applied there. So I know I keep coming back to Rain's Property Goldmine Scorecard, but it really is such a foundational piece and it just removes the emotion so yeah. that we're not making decisions based on, on, on belief systems. We're making them based on facts and we're creating that yeah. foundation for our future. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And again, we, you can't build a house without the foundation. You need the foundation and, you know, market analysis, knowing what kind of market you're getting in, where your property is, what is going on outside of your little property in the four, the four walls and the, and the roof and, uh, yeah. and, and, and feeling that right. Um, yeah. I, I can feel, it, yeah. sorry, Manny, that I because I know when you're just starting, it's like, okay, well, I just want to figure out the house or the property, yes. the, the property analysis and figuring out, like, I love how you pre uh, presented that in terms of knowing what's inside the four walls or whatever have you, but knowing beyond that. And and I guess that's where, you know, it, you're, you're not alone out there. If you're doing real estate, you're not alone. There's tons of support. I mean, real estate investing, in, um, investing in Canada, the books, real estate investment network, like we're here to support you. We've got the answers we've been doing this for 27 years yeah. as a company in terms of our research and our unbiased approach we don't care if you buy real estate or not we just care that if you're working towards your financial future <laughs> you do it right and we can yeah. help with that yep yep absolutely jennifer i'm getting the wrap up from my producer aka larry in the background love him hey, larry <laughs> We love Larry. Um, so thank you so much for coming out. Um, again, maybe just touch on where people can find out some more information or how they can get a hold of you. Perfect. So you can uh, check out our website at raincanada.com. So it's R-E-I-N Canada.com. And then in the link that I think just showed up below, yep. That's uh, right directly to our Acre registration. So Acre is our two and a half day real estate summit 
It's going to be epic. Uh, the date's here in Edmonton, September 27th to 29th. We've got an incredible lineup of speakers who are in the trenches. We've got some brand new research that's never been released before. Uh, there's just some, and, and we've actually got some really cool keynotes coming from uh, Scotiabank, for example, for an economic Ooh. analysis and economic development. And then we actually have also our uh, Acre Real Estate Summer coming up November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd in British Columbia. And we'll be back out in uh, Toronto in October. So definitely check out raincanada.com and then in our events calendar um, online. And, and I'd love to see you there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, for coming and joining me today, early morning as it is for you. Um, it is, uh, it's always my pleasure to listen to your genius come out and, uh, and your market research is, is second to none. So thank well, you. Thank you very much, Mandy. And I'll look forward to seeing you very soon at the next in meeting. October. Yes, absolutely. So thank you everybody for tuning in to another episode of the full-time investor. I'm Mandy Brenham, the joint venture queen. If you liked today's episode, leave a comment in the box. Um, let me know. Uh, I'd love your feedback. I'd love to know what's next on your level of investing and how we can uh, direct this show to be able to be there. So thank you everybody signing out for another week.